Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle, Cancer. Oh. So here we are on the other side of the Eclipse Tunnel. Though uh, transits, aspects, events like eclipses are not like switches where they're on or off. They're more like a stone thrown into a pond or a plucked string. Something begun that ripples out, reverberates. And it's interesting, the first half of the eclipse that was in Aries Libra squared Cancer. And then the second half is a sextile and trine, a sextile from the sun, or from the moon rather, in Taurus. And then the moon will trine uh, when we get the new moon in Scorpio on the 13th. Another thing that's happening astrologically is that on November 4th in the wee hours here on the East Coast, about three o'clock in the morning, Saturn stations direct in Pisces at about zero degrees. So now he will be moving direct, trying your sign. So this is, uh, this is like a stiffening of your spine. Um, or somebody handing you Right, handing you a, a stick to steady yourself and walk with. Um, structure coming together. So we begin your reading with open like the lotus. Flowering spirit, revelation, maturity. And I'm drawn to these little fairy beings here. They're very small. You might not notice them. And that kind of what it, it feels a bit like that. That this might come not in a big burst. Uh, but in the opening. You know, and, and plants, right? Plants and flowers are like that. If you've, you can watch um, time-lapse video of these things where, you know, the flower opens. But, you know, it happens very slowly and yet it can also seem like all of a sudden. You know, maybe you have flowers in your garden and they're just kind of in the bud and then they may be open a little and then the next time you look they're fully open and you didn't see it happen right the movement you know is imperceptible and yet suddenly there it is So it may be, right, something, something is opening, something is flowering cancer for you. And then it may feel like it's, like it's taking a long time, like the movement of that is imperceptible, but then it will be there. We have this chariot here, which is your card traditionally. And this too, right, this horse that's a, it's a carousel horse, appears to be stuck in the ground, and yet there's also a sense of movement. And it always makes me think of Mary Poppins, the movie, because they go for a ride on carousel horses when they jump into the chalk picture. And, you know, the horses have this, right, this bit on them, but 
it doesn't stop them from moving. So maybe, maybe too, that something you thought would stop you is turning out to not be the obstacle that you thought it might in fact be something that helps you get moving. And below that is this Hierophant card. Um, and in this deck, right, the, the papal seal here has been broken open. And there's a sense of kind of nature taking over again, both slow and sudden at the same time. And this new moon that's coming up in Scorpio is conjunct Mars and opposite Uranus. So there is the option decidedly for strong change and maybe change that's taken a while to get there. It is all in fixed signs, but then is suddenly Uranus there. And then we get the Emperor, Aries energy. And here in this deck, um, with this crow that is breaking free so, you know, for me, the emperor is not these hands. The emperor is in fact the crow who is breaking free of any constraints, any need for other people's approval. Um, you know, any, any anchors that were holding him previously. And I think that again, maybe there is, maybe it isn't really an anchor. Maybe these hands are actually helping the crow to take off. Maybe they seemed initially like they were holding the crow back. But now, now that the crow is ready, these hands will help the crow to take off. And then the moon. Now, traditionally, this is Pisces card because it's sort of meant to be about mystery and uh, the unknown and uh, illusion and these kinds of things. But when it appears in a Cancer reading, for me, the moon is always the moon herself. Your guide. And it may be that, that you're really going to feel this upcoming. Maybe you felt this, this whole eclipse cycle. And maybe you're really going to feel this upcoming Scorpio new moon. Because this is a very sort of Scorpio feeling card with the crow and the dark eye there. And we are, we're entering right this waning portion of the moon. I'm recording this the day I will release it on October 29th. The full moon was yesterday. So she will still appear fairly full tonight, but she is waning. So this is, right, this is kind of a, a quiet, perhaps reflective moment as, you know, during this next two weeks as we come to the Scorpio new moon on November 13th. So something here, again, this, this slow before the fast. And that this period 
it's going to allow you to really clear away any remaining mental brush, any remaining mental weeds that you don't want growing. That may be strangling what you do want to grow. These kinds of thoughts and it's possible that this eclipse has had any, you know, maybe events that you're involved in have really churned up what needs to be cleared away. Here with this King of Pentacles, I really feel Uranus's presence. This is not the sort of normal comforting um, King of Pentacles. It's a little, right, it's a little menacing, this owl. The sense of, the sense of the change, and it may be, it may too be feeling that you are, that you're sensing this change, this, whatever this sudden thing is that comes after the slow, whatever the fast is, you may be feeling it and that it's giving you discomfort. Because as much as Cancer is a cardinal sign, an energy of initiation, Cancer also wants to be secure, wants to feel stable. And so this, this Uranian, and especially this Mars opposite Uranus energy that will just precede the new moon in its exactness, may feel really uncomfortable. That, right, whatever gremlins and, uh, you know, mental weeds have perhaps been brought up by events during this eclipse. And then whatever change rushes in there is going to be some discomfort. But here, this Ten of Wands that comes next really feels like, right, it's a wrapping up. The, the loose ends, um, the, the remaining burdens are being tied off. Now I've been speaking as if, you know, kind of about your whole life, but it could be that this is something very specific for you. You know, it could be that you, you know, are, are moving on from one thing into another. Maybe you're switching jobs or maybe you've decided to start your own business or maybe you're retiring. Maybe you're selling a business that you've had for a long time. Or maybe you're moving. And there's, there are things that need to be tied up. Those last things. Here in this space. So the star is at the bottom of this deck. Something, something in the background, unseen, that is waiting to unfold. So these four cards, there is the Nine of Swords and the Five of Swords again, here with fear and defeat. So events here may be triggering this for you. Um, old fears, 
um, beers that really, you know, are the, the kind that are always worse in the middle of the night. Um, nebulous fears, fears based on, you know, childhood patterns and coping mechanisms. And then the thoughts that you have about these fears with this Five of Swords. So you may be confronted with these things, Cancer. So this, this time period is not without challenge. And I cannot say for certain that this is the last time ever that these fears will come up. But I think that it is maybe the last time that they will feel so strong and, you know, perhaps even almost overpowering. And maybe you haven't noticed, again, with the slow and fast, that each time these fears have resurfaced for you, that your relationship to them has changed, that uh, you've been able to more and more witness them from the outside. Or maybe witness them from the inside. Because here in the middle, we have this three and four of pentacles, works and stability. So this internal strength, internal stability, the knowing of who you are has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. So that now when these fears come in, when the gremlins chatter, it doesn't, right? It does, you're not as overset. You know, maybe you come out of it more and more quickly each time. So that eventually, maybe, maybe they will stop. And they won't be triggered again. And you may just notice suddenly, oh, I didn't have those thoughts this time when I did X that I've always had before. Slow and then sudden. And then we have the void this, this space, perhaps. Stop, embrace winter, great cosmic womb. Now it may be, possibly, if you're watching this when I post it, that, um, that something is sort of beginning. And, and I also feel like, like the Lotus, that there are layers here that there are many things that are this slow and sudden pattern. That you may find that, that many things in your life kind of feel like this through this period. So that maybe something will begin now and won't really open until spring. But that there will be other things that will open right in the middle of winter. And under that is, you're not alone. Isolation, physical connection, community. This feels like something that you need to remind yourself of regularly. That you are not alone.
and that you have so many more options and possibilities than this Nine of Swords midnight space leads might lead you to believe. Trust the timing. Trust the wave you came in on. Time is not running out. So this, right, again, we have this person out here and then here and then here. So, you know, if you were watching this, it might take a long time and maybe you look away and then suddenly the person's all the way over here. You know, when we see something every day, we don't always notice the changes. And it can seem as if nothing is changing because it's small and incremental, but then one day suddenly it's entirely different. Um, and I sort of feel like I'm belaboring that point. But maybe I need to. Maybe it's important that you really know this. Because maybe you felt discouraged. And you need, you just need a, a friendly word to say it's, it's happening. One day you'll look up and it'll just be there, open. And then the waterfall, inner power, unbridled confidence, claiming your place. Now, here in the center, you see there's this little door. And then the last card is the well maidens. Kindness, respect, uh, uh, reverence, and compassion. But you see they, right, have an opening too. And I want to say that, right, that if you go through the opening, you end up here. In this space of the well maidens. And for me, cancer is the well. Um, I have symbols, sort of elemental symbols for each sign, like Aries is the struck match and Leo the bonfire. And for me, the, the cancer is the well. The well where you go to quench your thirst, the well of healing. The sacred well. So, you know, really, really embracing yourself. here. Coming back to yourself in your fullness, embracing yourself, really recognizing, recognizing your own power. Cancer. I feel as if that is a that is a thread that has run through these readings, perhaps from the beginning, since I started the channel. This real recognition of self. And so we have the sun. Clarity. Dawn. All right, that's another one of these. Slow, slow, slow. Oh, there's the sun. <laughs> the dawn. And below that is the hermit. And then actually, I just saw that below the hermit is the star.
So following, following your own counsel, your own light, your own choices, your own star, not needing other people's approval. Um, not needing to uh, tick any particular marks, not needing to live your life the way anybody else does, not needing to conform in any way. Not needing to be anybody else's idea of what cancer is. You know, and underneath these guys is the Nine of Wands, which is that, oh, almost done, almost there. Have we made it? Gone so long for so hard. Gone so long for so hard. Gone so long, so hard. So much effort. But then there's the star. There's the well. So we have this three of swords, which is, you know, sort of particularly, um, painful looking. here. And in this one, in this card in particular, it feels like giving that pain to source. Just releasing it up. not holding on to it, not hugging the pain to your chest. But turning, turning to face the light, right? Like that this sun is what is on her face. And after that, Queen of Wands. And she's extra awesome in this deck. And she's actually, I mean, she is a fire energy, but here there is, right, there is this sense of starlight. And even of ice and water. Right? To release that and to go from here to there. Maybe you've felt this for a long time. Maybe your whole life. Slow and sudden. And then we get the Angel of the Night. This is an extra card in this deck that is in fact about coming back to the self, about being wholly yourself without uh, apology or uh, any feeling that you you have to meet somebody else's standard in any way. And then death. And this feels very much like a nod to this Scorpio new moon that's coming up and Scorpio season, uh, Samhain season all together. here. That this is a really fertile space.
and the space where uh, things can be put to rest. In your in your eclipse reading, we talked about you know not needing to wait for a sign that you could choose. Right, and this is about making choices and getting stronger and stronger every time you make a choice. So advice. We have here judgment, although it's very sun-like too, with these rays leaping out. And then we have the Six of Wands, which is very, um, right, kind of more than victorious, right, liberating in this deck. Now, I don't normally read from the guidebook, but I feel like today I was prompted to. So for this judgment, which is called awakening in this deck. Rise up in celebration. Let the song within help your soul take flight. You have woven your way out of the depths of the unconscious through the spiral web and have come to the moment of profound realization. Released from judgment and suffering, you are free to be who you truly are, spirit embodied. The dream of your heart, your desires, longings, and hopes awaken here in this moment, cradled in the circle of your soul. And then we have justice, which I'm also going to hold up the Wheel of Fortune, which comes right before it as number 10 in this deck. So this is this is the wheel and this is judgment, justice rather. Moving through the wisdom of the wheel, its spinning web, you find yourself rebalanced, ready to be your own agent of transformation. In justice, you arrive at the middle of the weaving between the past and the future, the space between other and self, the unconscious and the conscious, the real and the unreal. The ancient wisdom of the cosmos the infinite spiral dance invites you to practice humility, for in humility you can begin to open to the idea that all beings are equal. Now is the time to embrace a life that is full of possibility. Understand that you have the power to create a life of integrity in which no one can be diminished and nothing can diminish you. And the keyword, a favorite here on the channel, integrity. Um, the keyword actually for this card is communion, which is a very cancer car, uh, word. Communion. And then we finish here. And that was just 3344 four <laughs> on the clock with the nine of discs, the nine of earth. self-determination, personal sovereignty, um, the ability to manage your own resources, financial and otherwise. And I'm going to read a little bit of this to you. The key word is abundance. Gaze into the abundance of your heart. Radiant like a rainbow, it holds all the force of your desires and your dedication, all that you have cultivated for yourself and all that you have to offer. There is no room for grief here. Any sorrows have been honored for what they have taught, their lessons integrated into a wisdom that will continue to guide you. Take this time to acknowledge and celebrate your work.
So cancer. I think you're going to find a much greater level of freedom. And, and maybe some equanimity, yes, because you will really begin to see this pattern, to recognize this pattern of slow and sudden. And so you won't, you won't have that fear that nothing is changing, nothing is changing. Because you know that sometimes things take a little time to unfold. I wish you all the very, very best, Cancer, and I'll see you next time. So long.